Did Andre Drummond show you all enough last night if he can be consistent as a backup role to Joel Embiid and possibly start when Joel Embiid is out with injury? You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, you are locked on to the Philadelphia 76ers. Kayla Santiago alongside Keith Pompey each and every day here breaking down the Philadelphia 76ers. Thanks for making Sixers your first listen every single day, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe as well. And today's episode is sponsored by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. So we've got a lot to unpack here today. Last night was the first preseason game for the Philadelphia 76ers. Andre Drummond coming out there, making a big impact early on. And then you look at the rookie, Jared McCain. Do people like how he played offensively? It looked good. Defensively, there are a lot of questions still. But hey, it's still early on in the season for preseason action. Not only that, there's a lot of depth at the Philadelphia 76ers. We saw it last night, and I know it was only against the New Zealand Breakers, but it was still fun to watch those bench players to get into it. So we have to start off with Andre Drummond. I mean, I loved his play last night. He comes in, he's all over the place, he's grabbing rebounds, he looks in really good shape. And then Keith, we were talking about that he's been practicing a lot after training camp, getting those corner threes. He did it yesterday after the morning shoot around, and then he comes in and he hits that corner three, his first attempt of the game. He was exciting to watch, and it's really good signs that he's implementing in that to his game. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's funny, too, because about it before, it was one of those things, well, I'm just doing what the coach tells me to do, right? And then after the game, he was like, yeah, yeah. You know what, Keith, it's great to have a coach who believes in you. You know, I, I can do this. I did it before. Like he was telling me he played the three in high school, right? So when you look at that, you know, I, I do believe, you know, you asked the question, is he someone who can come in and play and start when Joel Embiid isn't playing? Absolutely. I mean, you know, Drummond is a two-time All-Star, a four-time rebounding champion, and his he does have an arsenal. Right. I mean, he finished with what, 11 points. Um, You know, he had five for seven shooting. He has seven rebounds, one assist, one block, one steal. So, you know, yeah, the guy, he can play. And I think that he's going to be able to contribute for them. Now, do you want him shooting threes all the time? No, but but he can do it. You know what I mean? He can do it. So to me, when you look at him more so, it's more is better for the depth because you want Joel Embiid playing. But you also realize that, let's face it, is he better than Paul Reed? Is he better than any other center that they had? The question is, yeah. And and he's a guy that's going to be able to help him this year. And I ask that question because you really look at it and you say, okay, every single year the biggest issue is when Joel Embiid is off the court, the plus minus is really, really crazy. And Andre Drummond comes in to yesterday's game full of energy. He looks like he's in really good shape as well. And that's just something really exciting to see. He's working on that outside game, which could be huge. But when you look at Joel Embiid, you know, you want to sit him out some games. He didn't play last night. We don't even know if we'll see him in the preseason. It is going to be really important for not only Drummond to be able to come in and start, be confident in that. And he's the been in this league. He absolutely is confident to come out there and start. Not only that, but just being consistent, Keith, because – we may not so see Joel Embiid so many times throughout this season starting, especially when they have back-to-backs, but consistency is going to be huge. And if he can be consistent on that corner three, well, he's going to be a ton of fun to watch this season. Exactly. And, and not only that, when you look at him, the corner three is going to open things up because when he's um, in the game, typically you're going to imagine it's going to be all about Max. It's all going to be all about Paul George. It's going to be all about other guys, you know, freeing them up. And the thing is, with that being said, I think he's a perfect fit for those two. Talking about Maxie and Paul George, because what does he want to do? They want to get out and run. He wants to run straight to the rim. He also loves crashing the boards, right? So he does that, and he can turn around and get the outlet pass. But then also, if he slides to the corner, you know, like we talked about, with with all the focus on Maxie and Paul George, 
he's going to get at least two to three open threes a game. Now, will he take them, all of them? Maybe not, but he get open. And if he hits one or two, then that's going to be harder for the teams to, to, to defend the Sixers. And now one play that I really love that I was up writing it down, making sure that I copied it when I saw this made the score 10 to one. Andre Drummond fights everybody off for a tough rebound, kicks it out to Eric Gordon, and he drains the three from the top of the key. He gets the start last night. He comes in, makes a big impact. And it was really good to see what he could do last night, Keith. I mean, this is a player that can pay dividends. He's not going to probably be in that starting lineup when the season starts. Of course, when you have Paul George in that lineup, but if he can come out off the bench, being able to be that guy that can step out and hit a three, that's what the Sixers need. Depth wise, it's been a struggle year after year. And if they want to win some really big games, especially in the postseason, they need a guy they can rely on that's going to come in off the bench that maybe starts here and there if there's some injuries in that starting lineup too. Yeah, I, I agree hundred percent with you. Now I'm be honest with you, I was I was shocked that he got the start. Mm. Um, you know, I, I thought that you know, what I try to do is I try to sneak and shoot around and see, okay, let me see who's standing where, who has on a blue jersey, who has this and that. Well, you look and you see him, he had one on, but you in the blue jersey is just like for the starters. And then also, so did um, Ricky Council the fourth, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're trying to figure it out. You're trying to figure it out. You think Ricky's younger, more athletic at this stage of his career. And then all of a sudden it's Eric Gordon. And you're saying to yourself, like, wow, I didn't know, like, Eric Gordon is kind of considered the sixth or seventh man, you know, for the Sixers right now. And then you look at it and you say, OK, it kind of makes sense because he can stretch the stretch the floor. But at the same time, you know, older guy, they want to push tempo. Is he going to be able to keep up, you know, consistently? And, you know, like you said, Drummond got that rebound. He gave it to him. He buried the three. Hey, good night. <laughs> right. So, so like uh, to me, that was that that showed me a lot. But it also the fact that he started, it shows you how much confidence Nick Nurse has in him. Now he's a veteran, he's a leader, he does a lot of things. So to me, that 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 was kind of like a giveaway of basically how how they feel about Eric Gordon. And it's interesting, Keith, because I'm kind of on the opposite side of it. And we were talking about this earlier of, did you expect Gordon to start? Did you or did you not? I kind of did, and I only mm -hmm. say that starting over guys like Ricky Council, because it is the preseason game, right? You go into this yeah. saying, okay, well, who are you going to start? Who are you going to see out there on the floor? Also, I know everybody loves Ricky Council, and I definitely like his play. I covered him last year on the Blue Coats. He's a really hard worker, but he's still somebody that's young, yes, and he can get up and down the floor, definitely keep up with the pace of the Sixers team a lot better for a longer amount of time. But I did expect that because Ricky is still working his way up to me. You yeah. know what I mean? You look yeah. at it right now, and I don't think during the season that he's going to be sixth or seventh off the bench when you start the year. I think he's got to work his way up because – Last year, he did that. He proved a little bit, but consistently he has to score more. This preseason is going to be huge, but I don't really see Nick Nurse going to him super early on on the bench to start the season. Do you agree or disagree with that? I know no, you were no, that, surprised to see Gordon, but I do understand your point as well. When you when you pinpointed that, it made like you, you, you're you making a lot of sense. Now, what I was thinking of, because when I was watching it, you look at it, that starting lineup, they had a Kelly Oubre Roman, right? Mm -hmm. You had Eric Gordon spotting up like near the three point line. But mm -hmm. then the guy who was doing the dirty work, the stuff that really doesn't get noticed was Caleb Martin. So me, I was assuming that maybe, you know, we were going to see Caleb Martin Roman. We were going to see mm -hmm. Kelly Oubre spotting up. And then I thought that, you know, because he's a, a, a young, athletic, still raw player, that we would see Ricky Council the fourth, you know, doing with with Gordon. I mean, not Gordon, with Martin did. Martin. So, mm -hmm. but it made a lot of sense because he can stretch a floor, and that's what they had him for. Um, and 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 then it, it allowed Kelly Oubre to basically do the stuff that they want Paul George to do. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Just be everywhere, just be out there, be active. And then you know, um, Caleb. I, I honestly, and I know we didn't talk about him, but I just feel like he's going to be 
the glue guy for them this year. And, and they allowed him to do that. That they did. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see rookie council in the starting lineup at some point over Gordon during the preseason if Paul George does not play as many games as one might think. So you never know. It's the preseason. This is what Nick Nurse has to do. And it's going to be fun to see and figure out how those starting lineups kind of look throughout this preseason as well. But we have so much more to talk about. And one person we have to touch on coming up is the rookie and Jaron McCain. What did you guys think about his performance? I know it's only game one of the preseason, but there is a lot to discuss. But before we get to that, hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return to FanDuel America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. When you place your first $5 bet, that's FanDuel.com. It's everybody's on everybody's mind every single day being able to bet. And something that's on people's mind right now, speaking of basketball, we're going to go to the women's side, though in the WNBA. So the New York Liberty are already in the finals. And as we sit right now, the odds are in their favor to win the whole thing. Minus 360, their favorites coming into the finals. But they're still waiting on their opponent tonight. The Minnesota Lynx are minus three and a half favorites over the Connecticut Sun to come out on top in a win or go home matchup. And then the Lynx looking to move on to the WNBA finals. It's going to be a fun one and a close one. The Lynx had Defensive Player of the Year in Nafisa Collier. They are favored to win it right now, according to FanDuel. So if you're a WNBA fan and you want to make sure you get your bets in before the tip-off tonight, make sure you head to FanDuel right here, right now. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to want to place your bets and see if you can come out on top earning some money as well. America's number one sports book. Be sure to visit FanDuel today to place all of your sports bets. There's no better place than FanDuel to do so. All right, so Jared McCain, and this has been a topic of discussion since he's been drafted. Is he going to be too small with Tyrese Maxey out there or if he comes off the bench with somebody like Kyle Rowley, Lowry, especially defensively? Now, Lowry is a player defensively that I don't worry about as much. Yes, he's getting older, but he's just so scrappy and he's able to get in front of people and really just be a pest on the defensive side of the ball. But Jared McCain, offensively, I liked how he looked last night. It took him some time, Keith, to get comfortable. But defensively, he comes in early, picks up two big fouls. He just looked out of place to me. Yeah, he did. He, he looked out of place. Um, and, and, and I think that's what we're going to see for a little bit. You know, he's a guy that's going to have to grow into the role. Now, the one thing is that they said is if you want to talk about a, a benefit, a plus, is that he was able to be – you know, do things on a catch and shoot. Um, but there was a time when he drove the lane and got blocked. You know, there was also times where, you know, defensively he was just seemed to be a little bit too small. Now, the one thing is that I will say is that, you know, it's, it's a process and, and he's going to have to learn um, and he's trying to go through that. And it seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, but, and you may agree, you may not, but a lot of the stuff that we keep hearing about him is like he's doing great, he's doing that, is because they want to make sure that he gets this confidence, that mm -hmm. like this the hard work that he's putting in, that he's going to get rewarded. Now, he did he did score 10 points in the second quarter, but then after that, if you notice, his shot went away a little bit, and then he finally brought it back. But, you know, right now, I think that he's going to have to work hard in order for him to be in that rotation against NBA competition. I think it's going to take a lot, and it really is too early to judge when you look at it. It's preseason game one. He has a lot of time to develop. He finishes with 15 points, seven rebounds, and three assists. But there's been so many draft picks for the Philadelphia 76ers that come in and lose their confidence or don't have it to shoot. You look at Markel Fultz. He had that injury and then forgot how to shoot. Ben Simmons, sometimes he was there. You saw him working on it at training camp and then never really got a consistent shot going ever, especially from outside. Now, Jeremy McCain is definitely a different case, but you look at it right now and when he's coming off the bench, you say, okay, that's where he's going to get his spot if he's able to consistently get in that rotation. He's got to be a knockdown shooter, and that's going to take some time, but he has to have confidence in that shot. And I don't think it just comes from shooting, though, Keith. I think it's on both sides of the floor. 
think about it as a basketball player, right? You're offensively, maybe you give up a big layup or you just got dunked on the last play and you're being asked to go down the floor, being able to put up a shot and drain it. I get it. They're professionals. This is what they're supposed to do. But with more NBA play, this is something that Jeremy Kane's going to have to get used to. And if he get burned on the defensive end, he can't carry that into his offensive play either. It's something that's going to take a little bit more time than I think people realize. I know Sixers fans love that satisfaction right away, but Jared McCain isn't necessarily a player to win now and be the guy now. He's going to take a lot of time to develop, especially for the future of this team. Yeah, I agree 100%. But I also feel like him being here is better for him. Because let's say if he went to a lottery team and then he would have to play right away. And then you look at the speed of the game right now. He has to adjust to that. There's other things that he has to do. He may have to get a little bit stronger. And he's a strong guy, but as far as leverage on the defensive end, and sometimes that's how you lose confidence. But, you know, we heard it in training camp. The guys kept praising him, raving over him, the coaches. You know, he's in the locker room with two future Hall of Famers, a former All-Star Olympic champion in Kyle Lowry, right? And mm-hmm. then he has Maxi. So I feel like if he continues to work hard and every indication I get from him that he will, that I feel like he'll be fine. Now, will he be a star or will can he be a good, a solid rotation piece? Yeah. I mean, you know, that's what you get nowadays with a 16th pick unless they, you know, overachieve like Maxi did at number 22. But at the same time, I just feel like this is the perfect situation because you got a couple journeyman guys who, who stuck. You have a bunch of former all-stars, and they all seem to like him. And, and I think that he'll be fine. But I feel like he might have been in a little bit of trouble if he would have went to a lottery team and you had to play him right away. And because I feel like that's where you lose your confidence. You know, that's where you lose your confidence. It is, and that's where you don't really give yourself time to develop either, and he's able to do that with this team. Now, do I still agree with the draft pick, and I always go back to this when the Sixers are in win-now mode? It's honestly not my favorite, but I'm not in the front office. I'm not making those decisions for the future of this team. In my mind, I always think of the Sixers. Their center point right now is Joel Embiid and soon-to-be Tyrese Maxey, right? And we talk about it all the time. Joel Embiid says he has eight seasons left to play. He really doesn't. Maybe two or three max with all the injuries. And maybe he does play longer, but he's not going to be as impactful as he is right now, eight years from now. It's just not going to happen unless he surprises everybody in the league. But at the same time, the Sixers are in win-now mode, but they also have a future to build. That's the point of being an organization. So I think the one thing that I look forward to McCain is to have somebody like Kyle Lowry as well. I know Tyrese Maxey is the main guy. He's the center point, especially in that guard position. But you look at a guy like Lowry, he's a smaller player. He has been his whole entire life in the NBA. He can play offensively. And then defensively, he's just such a pest. He's so different than any other player I've ever seen. I remember that Raptor series, and I was like, I cannot stand this dude. And he's a Villanova guy. And I've watched and covered Villanova all my life growing up. And I said, I cannot stand this guy because he's just annoying on the court when he's not on your team in a good way because defensively he's a problem. Keith, they're very different players. They're not the same really at all. But I do think that Kyle Lowry could help Jaron McCain, especially if they're going to be on the court together at the same time coming off the bench. Yeah, I agree 100%. But, you know, something that was really telling to me was the fact that um, McCain came in before Reggie Jackson, right? Mm. So when you first look at that, you're saying, hey, what's going on? But then you think about it, they're basically telling you that they don't view him as a point guard. They view him as an undersized two, right, combo, whatever, because he was out there with Kyle, who was playing the backup point guard role. And then Reggie comes in, and then after Reggie, then it's like Jeff Doughton. You you understand what I'm saying? So Mm -hmm. it was like, you know, Jared, they're looking at him more at this particular stage as an off-the-ball type of guy. But, yes, you are correct. (laughs) Having Kyle there – Another undersized point guard. You know, it's funny. These guys are six feet or whatever, but we're calling them undersized. Yeah, right. <laughs> Another undersized point guard. So it's one of those things that's going to really help with his uh, maturation and development. 
And real quick, Keith, before we get to our third point of this podcast here today, do you agree with McCain being kind of that shooting guard, that undersized guard and not the point guard? Because last night when I saw that, I really liked it because it takes a little bit of pressure off his shoulders. It's something he might have to get used to, but it's a big ask to be backing up Tyrese Maxey. Yeah, it's a, it's a major ask to be backing up Tyrese Maxey. And you look at it right now, and the one thing that we talk about is What's his NBA, NBA skill set right now that can mm-hmm. get him on the floor? That's shooting, right? Yeah. You know, defense, like, you know, as far as the other things, he's still a work in progress, but he can shoot the ball. And that's why I guess the encouraging thing was he was knocking down some catch and, catch and shoot shots, right? Because that's how he's going to get on the floor. You know what I mean? Like, you, you're going to have Eric Gordon wanting him ahead of him. But there's going to be certain times where you say, okay, can you come in here and knock down a couple shots? And that's going to help the team. And speaking of Jaron McCain, we're also going to touch on the depth of the Sixers because watching that last night, a ton of bench players coming in, of course, with Tyrese Maxey and Oubre and Martin as well. In addition to that, they were in the starting lineup. But I'm excited. I'm excited for the depth. I'm excited for the bench. We are going to get to that here today. Talking about the Sixers gets me so excited for when you're in that atmosphere, when you get to go to the games live, because it is here right now, even if it's a preseason game, it's still fun to go out there. And there are so many games that can get you into that atmosphere as well. But there is a super deal going on right now that you will not want to miss out on. So one of the NFL games coming up this week that you have to keep your eye on is the Baltimore Ravens taking on the Washington Commanders. This super deal part of game time that you are going to want to download that app right now and check this out because this is a game you will not want to miss a chance being able to see live. So Jaden Daniels has been on a tear for this commander's team and the Ravens, they just went in thrilling fashion against the Cincinnati Bengals. So it's been so much fun to watch both of these teams and they are playing on Sunday, October 13th. And if you want to experience this live in the lower end zone, you still can with game time, super deals section 149 row seven for $489, the top 1% value. Another great deal, thanks to Game Time, is at the upper sideline and you get $11 off Game Time that you won't want to miss. So make sure that you go download the Game Time app. There's so many deals that you need to get. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, make an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and use code Locked On. That's L O C K E D O N N B A for twenty dollars off. Make sure you download Game Time today. What time is it? It is Game Time. All right, the depth of this Sixers team is something I've been so excited to discuss here today. After that preseason game, it's crazy that I was just getting chills before the preseason game against an MBL team in the breakers, but I was ready for it. I was ready to see basketball back on my TV, being able to discuss it here on Locked On Sixers as well. So I want to talk about a few things to start us off. Ricky Council, Keith, is somebody that you thought, okay, maybe he'll get a start. He comes off the bench, still looks good, 13 points. I early petition him to be in the dunk contest for the Sixers. During NBA All-Star Weekend, I think we need to make that happen somehow. But Ricky Council, if he can be consistent on that shot from outside and still have that same aggression and shoot at a higher clip, I think he's going to make some damage coming off the bench this year. Yeah, I do. I do. I, I think so. I think I think if he does that. Um, I think the one thing that I, I think and he needs to do, there were certain times where he was playing out of control yesterday. Mm-hmm. He was like a little bit too excited. He just needs to streamline it a little bit. But outside of that, yeah, he's going to be good. And and then there, there's other players that, that really impressed me. Now, the one thing I will say, though, it was kind of hard to get a gauge, an accurate gauge, because mm. that other team was just so bad. You know what I mean? It, <laughs> it was just so bad. I mean, you know, you had – at one point, it was basically the starting lineup of the Sixers G League team that you mm-hmm. would expect it was just giving them the business. You know what I mean? So it was like that team was just bad to me. 
Yeah, I think when you look at the NBL team, a lot of respect to them, right? They put three NBA teams on their schedule, the Jazz, OKC, and the Sixers. They're trying to play tougher competition. They have some former NBA players on their team as well, including Jonah Bolden, who played with the Sixers for 48 games between 2018 and 2020. So a lot of respect to them, but they're in different leagues for a reason. The NBA is the best league in the entire world. So when you look at it, yeah, can you really gauge how good these depth players are doing because they're playing a team they're never going to see again until maybe next preseason? Not really, but I like that you mentioned about Ricky Council because this is something that I was able to analyze when he was with the Blue Coats. He gets excited a lot when he drives to the basket. And he has so much power, so much power. You see it on the dunks that sometimes, Keith, it's almost too much power when he's going up there because he can miss wide open layups or just completely miscue that little pull away step back jumper that's coming out short of the elbow. There's a lot of things that he gets super excited about. So I would like to see this coaching staff a little bit really work on his control in moments like that, because yes, it's good to always be on it all the time. When you're going after the loose balls, things like that, things your team needs. But when you're driving to the basket, you got to figure out your force and when is too much, too much, because you're not always going to get a dunk every time you go to the cup. You're exactly right. Now, you know what? The one thing that was eye opening to me though, was the backup center position. Like, you know, a lot of people were, oh, my gosh, they were excited because I'll call him the dancing bear because I'm always butchering his name. <laughs> you, it was a, your Boussole, right? Did I say it the right time? Yabusele. Yabusele. Oh, Yabusele. You're there. So you're you're, you're close. You're close. You're close. <laughs> I always do it. So look, if, look I, would miss, I would probably mess up my last name, call myself Pompey if I wasn't <laughs> named. But anyway, the thing is that it really stood out to me was that you know, they're saying that this guy is a power forward more so than a five, but he was the backup center. Yep. So to me, what that's telling me is that they look at a Dembona as someone who's going to spend a lot of time in the G League. Right. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, the, he's listed as the center and the other guys as a power forward. But the fact that he didn't get that nod it tells me that, you know, they don't think that he's ready right now for, for that role. Yeah. And I would have to agree with that. I think you're going to see him on the blue coats a little bit more than you may be expect, but Yamu Sully, going back to him, I love the way that he played last night. You look at it, the fantastic yeah. cuts that he had, he was able to get up and under on those layups and it may be tough for him against different teams that have bigger guys, but the center position has changed so much in today's NBA. There's no more really bully ball on the block. You see it sometimes. You don't really even see it all the time with the two best centers in the league and Embiid and Jokic, right? Like you, do but they can do so many other things they can come out they can hit the three they can hit the jump shot consistently so when you're looking at a center position it's so different than it used to be back in the day during Shaquille O'Neal times when Shaq was taking over the entire position so Yabu Sully is somebody I'm really excited about and I love that Nick Nurse was able to try this out during the preseason because in my mind that tells me they have a plan when Joel Embiid can't play you're clearly going to start Andre Drummond, and now Yabu Selly can come in and back him up and can do it effectively. Now, it's game one of preseason. I know people. I'm not trying to get too excited. But at the same time, that's something you have to look at. And the fact that Nick Nurse is already planning that shows me that this team is going to be more than ready to play if Joel can. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, and but also, like you said, they were also tipping their hat, letting it be known what their game plan is, you yep. know, for the rookies. And, and both of these rookies – it looks like, I mean, don't get me wrong. They both play with a lot of energy. They're both going to be good. But right now, they both have a learning curve that they have to overcome. And, you know, Yabu Sully got it right. Yabu Sully is a guy <laughs> who's ahead of him right now. And, and he is versatile. Now, again, I, I can't wait to see what he does Friday. I can't wait to see what he does on Saturday and, and the other preseason games. But you know, he looked like a guy who's who's NBA ready. You know, he dominated like he was expected to dominate. That he did. And before we send things off here, we have to shout out Reggie Jackson to 15 points finishing with last night. Very, very good. Five for seven from the field inside the paint. Three for five from beyond the arc. Two assists as well to add to that. And then somebody else I really liked coming in, K.J. Martin. Now he only had six points, but he was 
everywhere on the court. And that's exactly what you need coming off the bench. The Sixers for so many years haven't had a guy that's willing to go out there and do that. And if Martin is somebody that can come off the bench, this is KJ Martin I'm talking about after Kayla Martin does the same thing in the starting lineup. So the Martin's last name, maybe some sort of connection yeah. there. But yeah. I really like what I saw from Jackson and Martin last night, too. You know what? Exactly. You know, Jackson showed you what he what, what he what he came here for. Now, he's a guy that. You know, he wasn't shy to shoot the ball now when he got in the game. And that's what they're going to need him to do. He's going to be a guy that takes some of the scoring off of people when people are on the bench just hoist it up. And the thing about K.J. Martin, you know what he reminded me of a little bit? He reminded me of the Daniel House role last year mm. before he was traded. You know, yeah. Daniel House was a guy that they said, we just want you to come in, play with a lot of energy, run rim to rim, do a lot of different things, be versatile. And, and and that's what he did. You know, there were times where I felt like he got whacked and hacked and the ref didn't call it. And he was looking for a call. But at the same time, I felt like he did what he was supposed to do. And that's a role that if he could crack the rotation, that's a role that he's going to have. Now, the Sixers don't play again until Friday in their preseason game against the Timberwolves. So it'll be practice all week and then getting into that matchup Friday night. We'll see if we hear anything. If Paul George is ready to go on Friday, if Joel Embiid starts really practicing with the team, there's still a lot of questions surrounding the two big stars in Philadelphia. We saw Tyrese Maxey last night. Shout out to him as well. We didn't touch on it as much, but it's exactly what we expected from Tyrese going out there, giving it his all and really helping out those younger guys too. So thank you all so much for making Locked On Sixers your first listen today. Now for your second listen, go find Locked On NBA where the local experts keep you updated daily on all the biggest storylines ahead of the season. Find Locked On YouTube on NBA as well. This is going to be a fantastic podcast. You'll make sure you want to listen. Locked On Sixers, that's who we are. Kayla Santiago, Keith Pompey. Thank you all making us your first listen today. You can also find Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Become a fantasy basketball expert and get the edge over your league mates with daily tips from Josh Lloyd. Find your Locked On Fantasy Basketball on YouTube or wherever you listen to. Sixers, got a big week of practice ahead of them before they go take on the Timberwolves. And we'll be sure to keep you updated all week long.